In this video, we'll use the Raspberry Pi to control a DC motor. You should already know how to control components using an NPN transistor, be able to use pulse width modulation to change the brightness of an LED, and be familiar with the function of diodes. Let's first consider controlling a motor directly from the Raspberry Pi. You need to use a transistor as motors typically draw more current than a GPIO pin can safely provide. This circuit is essentially the same as the one used to control an LED with a transistor. The load is placed on the collector, we have a resistor to limit the current passing into the base, and the emitter is connected to ground. The main difference when using a motor, or any device which produces a magnetic field, is the inclusion of a diode. This prevents voltage spikes which can occur when the motor is switched off as the magnetic field collapses. In this example, I'm using a relatively small motor, so I can connect it to the Raspberry Pi's 5V and ground rails. So in total we'll need three connections to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. One to 5 volts, one to ground, and one to a GPIO pin. Now if we want to turn the motor on, we simply set the GPIO pin high. And if we want to turn it off, we set the pin low. But what if we want some in-between speed? If we turn the GPIO pin on and off very fast, then the motor would spin approximately half as fast. We can accomplish this by setting the pin as a pulse width modulated pin. All we then need to do is change the duty cycle of the pin to change the speed of the motor. Here I'm using the exact same code that I used when I wanted to light and dim an LED. The duty cycle first increases, which will speed up the motor, and then it decreases, which will slow down the motor. This process will then repeat as it's in a while loop. As mentioned before, we need three connections to the Raspberry Pi. One to 5V, one to ground, and one to a GPIO pin. Let's give it a go. You can tell that the motor is slowing down and speeding up just by listening to the sound it's making. So pulse width modulation gives us a way to speed up and slow down a motor, but what if we want to change which way it's turning? For this we'll use the L293D motor controller. Let's first go over its pinout. It has two voltage inputs, VSS and VS. VSS powers the chip's logic and should be supplied with 5 volts from the Raspberry Pi. VS is the voltage supplied to the motor and can be set as high as 36 volts. There are four ground pins which are internally connected. We'll only need to use one of these, though for larger current loads these can be connected to a copper plate which can additionally act as a heatsink. That leaves us with five pins on either side. Each set of pins can separately control a motor. As I plan to only set up one motor, I need only use one side of the chip. To enable the left side, enable one must be connected to five volts. The two input pins connect to two GPIO pins set as outputs and the two output pins on the chip connect directly with the motor. The two input pins give us a way to control the direction of the motor. When both are set the same, the motor doesn't move, but when one is set high and the other is set low, the motor will either spin clockwise or counterclockwise. So now we have full control over the motor. Here's the overall circuit diagram. In this case, I'm using a separate power supply connected to VS to power the motors. If you do this, make sure to connect the ground of the power supply, or a negative of the battery, to the ground of the Raspberry Pi. I've modified the script so that the motor will spin back and forth. To do this, I've set up a second GPIO pin as a pulse width modulated pin. The other change is that after the motor is spun down, the motor will spin back up, but in the opposite direction. So the first two for loops are responsible for spinning the motor one way, and the bottom two for loops are responsible for spinning the motor the opposite way. These two wires connect to an external power supply. As mentioned before, its ground must be connected to the Raspberry Pi's ground, which itself is connected to the chip's ground. Let's give it a try. The motor now spins back and forth. It's kind of hard to see, so give it a try for yourself.